uh, hi guys uh, welcome to my channel for another video uh, if you have not seen my previous video so please check the description and click on the link to uh, see the video hello friends uh, in our previous video we did implement this fake payment process to submit an order uh, in this video we will go ahead and implement actual stripe payment process to purchase an order to complete the payment process so here what we need to do we need to sign up uh, with stripe and then uh, we need to get the secret key and then uh, publishable key to call the stripe api to complete our uh, purchase process so friends open a edge type stripe and then once you type you would see here stripe.com stripe payment click on that uh, click on sign in and uh, here is the sign up page so if you do not have a sign up yet so go ahead and sign up it and once you sign up right then you can go here and sign in so here uh, you have your email and then the password put it there right and then click on continue so i already have the account with stripe right uh, so once you signed in right you would see a option for developer click on developer link and then here uh, you do see overview api keys web hooks events logs right so you click on your api key and then here you do see a publishable key right it it start with pk test because we are on a test mode right and then we have a secret key and it should have something like this and it should start with sk okay so if you click on reveal test key it will show your um a key over here and then you copy both and then we'll go back to our visual studio and then paste this two value to our app setting page so let me go back to my visual studio so here is my visual studio which is running because uh, we do see this space over here so let's click on close and then the visual studio got stopped so here what i need to do i need to open a app setting dot json file so here we'll go ahead and set the stripe key over here so then whenever we need to use those key we can get it from here and then call a stripe api okay so let me go ahead and do it here comma here type stripe and then type here secret key secret key from a stripe page copy and paste it here Then publishable key copy it from a stripe right here if you click on copy it will get copied right and then go to visual studio again paste it here so now you do have a publishable key over here so make sure you keep your secret key secret okay so you copy from there and paste it here this is a fake secret key but once you copy and paste it here right and then now what we have to do we have to create a process to receive the secret key and the publishable key from here to do that what we have to do we have to go open our program.cs file here right and then here we have builder service and all this right and uh, so what i'm going to do i need to create a class let's say i'm going to create a class here and then class name is stripe settings click on add here i will create two fields public string secret key which is get and set here and then and the next line prop put the string i'll have publishable key so i do have these two field here let's go back to our program.cs file again double click here so we have a program.cs file over here 
So now here I'll type builder dot services dot on this drive. So we are pointing to our uh, app settings on here, this S drive, okay? Now, so friends, once you type this line, uh, what we have to do, we have to install a Stripe in our Visual Studio. To do that, go to our tools, then go to here, then click on Manage NuGet Package for Solution. So here you type a Stripe. And here you do see we have a Stripe.net over here. Click on it, then install it to our Jahi Take web and then click on install so once install completed right uh we'll go ahead uh open our program.cs come over here here under the app routing page uh we'll go ahead and get the api key for stripe okay uh so type here stripe configuration dot api key equal to builder dot configuration a stripe secret key here let's do add this to our program or cs file using a stripe so what it what it is doing it is storing the api key from our app setting page so here you can see the stripe right there and then under this we have secret key okay so if we go here you can see a stripe and then under this we have secret key okay so now we did set up the configuration for a stripe so let's go to our order controller so we did build this page in our last video right if you haven't seen it please go ahead and see it and then come back to this uh, video okay uh so here's so uh we did implement this fake payment process in our last video so we'll go ahead and remove this line and then we'll go ahead and start typing code for uh stripe payment okay so remove this line from here uh, so here we are going to type bar equal to options equal to new session create options make sure you do see here it has to be a check out option right so when i create it right i'll go on the top here you do see it did at the stripe checkout namespace over here right so now what we have to do we have to set up the success url and then the cancel url here because we need to send the information to a stripe that when payment process is succeeded then it then it should route to the success url if it doesn't succeed it then it should route to the uh cancel url so to get our url what i need to do i need to put here success url equal to here i'll put the com comma here right let's run our project our project is i ran that project right so if you run your project you should see the url here it said account login but when payment process succeeded right we do not want to route to account we want to route to a success page right so i'll go and copy it and then paste it here right but i'll change to you see we have order success view over here so i'll route to order success right and this should be remove this line here and before order success we need to have order controller so what it is doing from this local host will route to order controller and then route to order success view page okay and then here what you need to do we need to also pass the id of the order so i'll type summary view model dot order summary dot id okay 
and th this is how we are defining the success url okay so let's stop this uh, here we also need to initialize the cancel url as well so let's type cancel url equal to then i'll copy all the way here copy it and paste it here right but here we're going to have a order cancel uh, page right or order cancel function over here so we need to change this to order cancel and then we also need to pass the id of the order that got cancelled okay and then here you do see our order cancel uh, doesn't have a parameter so let's put a parameter here in id all right uh, so um, so what it did uh, the session create option uh, it create a new checkout session to handle the payment process okay and now here we need to have line items so let's do line items so this is a list it hold a list okay that you can see uh, here it said is the list so what list we're going to send here uh, we're going to send the list of the product that user choose to buy okay so to do that uh, i'll go ahead and type new list equal to session line item options okay now here we have to put the mode mode equal to payment okay so i hope you did understand up to this so here we are setting up a success url uh, we also have a cancel url here right and we did implement this order success function and then order cancel in our last video so please do watch our last video okay and uh, now here what we have to do now we have to store the store the list of the products in our line items to do that i will use uh, to do that i will use for each loop okay and the for each loop i'll type bar item in summary view model dot user cart list uh, so here's i will create the session line items for our each item from user card so type here bar session line item equal to new session line item option then type price data equal to new session price data option then type here unit amount equal to put long here then type item dot product dot price times 100 currency equal to usd then product data equal to new session line new session line item price data product data option here i'll type name equal to item dot product dot name this is the name of the product here and then description equal to item dot product description here type comma type quantity equal to item dot quantity right and then outside here put type here options dot line items dot add then we'll go ahead and add the session line item here so now so we did add the each item from our shopping cart and then sending this to a stripe using option okay so now let's go out from this for each loop here i'll go type bar service dot bar service equal to new session hit enter the type session session equal to service dot 
create session with the option here. Here we'll go ahead and response dot headers dot add. I'll put the location and send the Stripe session URL here. Then we'll go ahead and return new status code result equal to uh, status code result 303. And here I'm not sending any view. If something fails, I want user to redirect to the home page. So cancel it, type redirect to action so that should be index comma home controller okay so uh what we did here um we create a option for a stripe in this option we set up a new success url and cancel url and then also line items here so in this line items we are storing that each item that user select in the user card list so then when it route to a Stripe page for payment, uh, on that page, user can see what they are going to buy, right? So we use for each loop, and then we creating the session line item option here. And then for the price info, we initialize price data, right? And then here uh, we are collecting the amount, right? Then the amount should be in USD. And then product data, here we are having the name, for the title of the product and then the description and any quantity each product they're going to buy okay and then with the option line items we are adding this session line item to our line items and here we create a service with the session service and then uh, we creating the service with the with this option okay so uh, and then with this response header we are routing to the stripe url and once everything is done and completed we're returning the uh, status code okay so when everything completed over here if order gets succeeded the stripe knows this is the success url and then it will call our order success url here so with the order summary id so if i go over here uh, you see we have a order success function over here uh, with a parameter and this is we are receiving uh, from order id here right so once it come over here uh, is to we do not need to check if user is signing or not just remove this line remove this extra bracket here so here you can see the user id we are getting the user id from here and then we last video i explained this so please watch that and then the order process right uh here we also need to add the user id in the order order header table i think in our last video we did not store the user id in the order header table so go ahead on the top here i can store it right so here i type summary view model dot order summary dot user id equal to summary view model from view dot cart user id here okay and now if i go down here so this is say order process dot payment status to paid here we also have to type order process dot payment process date and it should be today's date okay so now uh we had implement this in our last video right as i said uh please watch it and then make sure you type everything as it is here right and here i think we do not need this remove this line here and just put user id because we already have the user id here so we do not again have to use our user manager to call the user id again so far we are good here let's go to our uh, order detail preview model i'll i'll go ahead and change the view for this one here right so let me copy and paste it here so just remove this 
and I'm going to paste it here. So the, I did modify the view. So if you want, you can modify it. So before uh, we didn't have the order ID number here on this uh, page. So I just add a view back dot order ID here, right? So let's go to our controller here. And then here, what I'm going to do, I will add a view back here, view back dot order ID equal to ID because we are getting the ID when uh, a stripe return to our order success function, right? And let's go to order success page again. So make sure to type whatever is here, right? Or if you want to have your own view, you can uh, define your own view also. But this is our order success page, okay? Uh, so friends, uh, now let's do modify our order cancel function. So here we have the order cancel function here. So we are receiving also order ID here. Let's say when user cancel the order. So we want our user to redirect to our card index space. Before we redirecting it, uh, we need to also remove the order header because the order got canceled. So let's go ahead and do it. Type order process canceled equal to underscore db dot user dot order header dot first or default u goes to u dot id equal equal id underscore db dot order headers dot removed which is order cancelled save the db here db dot save changes and then here we will go ahead and redirect to our card index space uh, so friends uh, let me go ahead and open my database so my database name is food estates db right i'll go open it let's close these two of them here so here i will open order header so i'm going to remove all that data from our order header table okay delete from order headers i'll execute this line we see the five rows got affected so if i execute this line here now we do not see any data here and also in our order details and we do not have any data here okay so let's uh, go ahead and build this project here i'll have a one debug point here and then another debug point on our cancel okay i'll run the project uh, let's go ahead and sign in submit here currently we do not have anything in our cart so let's go add a few items here one item two item three item let's go to our cart increase a few of them three two okay and now what we have to do let me do one thing i'm gonna have one more debug point here okay so here i'll go ahead and click order request so now we have our default information over here right uh, here you can see our estimate delivery date is between 21st to 26 okay and we have three items for dry cake we have aromatic rice one pieces right so all together it comes 5196 let's go click on submit order so now you can see we come to our post function let's go click on continue so we stop here so what we did we add data to our order header table so if i open my database right click on execute order header we should see a one data so this is the user id you can see and with the order id and then tracking number the other information for the delivery address and all but you see the payment status is not paid and payment process date is null here <laughs> so let's go ahead click on continue okay so we do see a error here it said your api key is invalid
uh, so friends I have typed my actual API key in our app setting.json file so let's go ahead and stop it so you also know we already added the data to our order header table before complete our payment process you can see it it is here right uh, but this process did not succeed it okay so now let's go ahead and run it again uh, we still have this three item because our payment did not go through and it is still staying here so i'll go there again uh, click on order again so what's going to happen it will create the same order in our database right because the previous order is still staying here now it is going to create another order here but uh you know uh, in our next video we'll go ahead and you know remove the duplicate order which payment status is not paid but in this video we'll go ahead only testing the uh payment order if it is succeeded or not let's go ahead and click submit now click continue and you can see the another order here you see it is the same with the same information right uh it created another order but this is a duplicate order now click on uh, continue so now you can see uh we are routing to our stripe payment page right here so here you can see we have dry cake which is three pieces each is twelve four dollar, which is coming twelve dollar. Aromatic rice is twelve dollar one pieces. Uh, hill shop is two and twenty four dollar, right? Uh, all together, it is coming forty eight dollars, right? So, so let me go ahead type my email ID here. So, Stripe give us a test card which we can use for testing the payment process so that should be 424242 so this is the uh, test credit card which we can use for testing okay and put the 1226 and put any future date over here okay and type one two three and the name of the card persons on the card which is test name and put the zip code is whatever you want to put right uh, I'll just uncheck it. I'll go ahead and click on pay. No thanks. So you can see it now route to the success page, right? Because the payment got succeeded. And you can see we did receive the ID of the order, right? So what it will do, it will remove the items from user card, right? Because we already succeeded the payment here, right? So let's go ahead and continue. So now we do have our order success page right here. Uh, you can see this is the order number, right? And from here, uh, we can go do more shopping. And you can see we clear out the cart here, right? Uh, and because uh, we remove all the items from the user card, now the card is zero item, right? So if user want to go back to keep shopping page, they can go back and they can start again, add items to their cart. Uh, so friends, uh, let go to our stripe account to see if that payment got successful or not okay uh, so i'll go to here open our stripe account we are on our developer page here you can see the payment so you do see a lot of payment over here but those are previous transaction for testing but the testing that we did for this project which was 48 dollar uh, you can see 48 dollar from the customer email here right if i click on it right and you do see the payment method right there and the details of the product here dry cake is three quantity which three times four is 12 right 112 and then two is here is 24 so that means it's 48 dollars here but the one thing you can see the price here and then the price on the order summary is a little different uh, right so uh, friends i'm keeping this error uh you to find out where is the issue uh, we'll go ahead and talk about this in our next video so let's go to our page again let's go open it again uh, this time i'll add this one more i'm gonna add few more items here let's add this item this item this item this item here item here let's add all those items 
that's for testing. So now we have 15 items here. Click, click on order requesting button, right? And here you can see we have 15 items and then the default information. Uh, if you want to change the delivery address, you can change it here, 95 Street, right? And uh, now you can see all the items listed over here. And here you do see we have a scroll bar to see all the items, right? Um, so let's total price is 294. Click on submit, right? Click on continue again. So here we already created data to our order header. Just take it over here. Uh, execute it again. So you now see the new order here. Uh, the price is uh, not paid yet. So you see it's not paid here, right? Let's go ahead. Uh, here you do not see the total order amount. We also need to fix it, okay? Um, let me go ahead, click on, click on continue. It will route to our Stripe payment page. So uh, this time we do not want to submit the order. Okay, what do we want now? Uh, we want to cancel. So let's go ahead and click on cancel. So once we click on cancel, it will route to our uh, cart index page and also remove the order header. Also remove the data from the order header, which we just uh, created here. Okay, so let's go ahead, click on cancel so you can see it did came so now it knows we have an order in our order header data which it need to cancel with this order id okay uh, go ahead click on continue and you can see uh, we came back to our uh, card index page right and then let's go check our database here click on execute now you do see it got removed here right uh, so uh, in our next video we'll go ahead and also improve some uh, functionality because we do see some bugs here also thank you for watching the video see you in the next tutorial please do share like and subscribe the channel thank you bye